Okay, so B5, as the movie mentioned, five pillars. I've been always talking about four pillars in the past, sharpness, color, contrast, and motion. Uh, now, with B5, we put a lot more emphasis on the source. Um, what's happening in source, like new sources, HDR coming in, but also source protection, not so uh, perfect sources coming from uh, uh, online uh, stuff uh, through the internet uh, that we can deal with. So in that respect, it's a very important pillar within the B5 uh, that is now uh, that we have been working hard on to improve picture quality. Five pillars, in more detail, 26 uh, different steps with MP5. Within the scope of this workshop, I will not uh, handle all 26, but I will handle 11. So let's go 11, one by one. In 26 means that we have like 25% improvement in existing features to which we approve, and also 25% uh, features are new, so we have like 50% more performance from uh, compared to our previous war frame perfect pixel increase engine. We go one by one uh, through this. So one of the first steps in the source uh, perfection is how to handle noise. Incoming signal, you see a lot of noise in the sky. The way to handle it uh, today in the industry also a little bit how we did it, is we clean up the sky as, 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 as good as possible, actually so, but what you see is you clean up sharpness. What we can do now is uh, we can clean up the sky, but you see that uh, sharpness in the trees remains. Especially this is important or is, is difficult to do when there's also a lot of motion in your picture. And that's because we have a motion detection a mechanism for, for motion uh, performance in there already. We're now linking those up to each other and we know how much motion is in the picture and we know how much noise reduction we can do. So we get cleaner skies, so pretty picture with a lot of motion. This is a picture where you can imagine the, cam the camera pans over it, you get a clean sky and you keep the sharpness the digital world, many artifacts can happen, like block artifacts, the grid of the impact you see, mosquito noise around the room, um, you get with impact artifact reduction from B5, we're able to get mosquito noise uh, reduction completely uh, well done, no blocks visible, no grid. <coughs> and a very important one also is smart grid enhancement. Many of, all of the sources and the data gets compressed. By compressing it to 8-bit and even go lower than 8-bit, get those kind of uh, banding in pictures like this, in the skies, generally, with the main examples of all that. By smart bit enhancement doing 14-bit processing, you are able to clean up the banding, but don't do the shot again. And it's about, every time it's about cleaning up artifacts to keep the sharpness there. It's very easy to clean up and to eat up all your sharp sharpness. But uh, doing about the, the two together, make it uh, clean and keep it sharp, it's difficult to do with smart bit now. Next step in uh, B5 is the sharpness. Uh, first step uh, <coughs> talking here is ultra resolution upscaling. Nothing new. I mean, we have that, uh, we have that before. Of course, still have an MDP5 because most of your content is still not 4K. Still, a lot of Full uh, HD uh, is coming into your video, <coughs> which uh, will have that display 4K. So, you want to have the maximum capabilities or use of your display resolution that is done to both your resolution. With the detail alter, we go one step further. So, when we are at ultra resolution upscaling, detail enhancer, we're able to again make finer details than ultra resolution upscaling and therefore create more depth impression. I'll give you later on a couple of nice examples of where this feature really uh, works. 
Next step, color. Of course, now all went up in color gamut in our display. So we have in our range, our own range, our V5 range, our 7000 starts with 85% color gamut. Then we go to our quantum dots, which are 96. We go to our uh, uh, OLEDs, which are 99. But on top of that, we also have 17 bit color processing, uh, which is resulting into physical colors with metal color and color shapes. It's nice to boost up colors, but we also keep the, the skin tones uh, natural. So, with skin tone detection, when there is skin tone in your picture, we're going to try to balance out how much vividness do we put in the, in the colors and how we will be able to keep natural skin tones. The next block is contrast. In contrast, we usually do global contrast enhancement. That's what everybody does. So what they do is they do a bit of black stretch, do a bit of white stretch, which you get in the middle picture. This advantage of doing some black stretch is, for instance, that you high details. Yes, you create a more crisp your picture, but you, you hide in details. In other parts, you will wash out the, the whites. With the local contrast enhancement, we can zone per zone optimize the picture. It's not that we are doing one level of contrast histogram processing for the whole picture. It's done zone by zone. In that respect, having a very crispy, contrastful picture without hiding blacks or uh, details in blacks <coughs> resulting into an incredible shot. But of course, we handle also the new sources. Uh, I put them in the basket of contrast, because HDR10, introduced last year, and HLG, which we introduced in Madrid already, to, to uh, the two new HDR standards we are supporting, creating, or resulting into brighter, more contrast, more colorful, more detail feature. Also part of the part. We do the real HDR process, HDR, HDR10 and HLG. But just like ultra resolution upscale, it's a very important feature for uh, for resolution, for your sources, your full HD sources, for the, the lack of 4K sources you have in your living room. Just like that, you don't get yet into your living room H HDR. Yet you're buying HDR TVs for this consumer will do. What you would like to give them is, even if they don't have that real HDR source there, give them also and performance which is very close to HDR. That's why we are doing HDR upscaling as part of the pack of P5. And you see it here in three different flavors. It will be depending on your dis display capabilities that you with the picture processing can do a different level of, 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 uh, of performance. But a very important feature which will help people that before the real uh, momentum on HDR in your living rooms comes, but still you have a lot of energy. Then we have the motion. Uh, update on this one, very new. It's converting 24 pictures or 25 pictures a second. It doesn't have a lot of motion information in there. So which judders, which has blur, by, by doubling it, you go and doing it right motion estimation uh, to 50 hertz you make it more smooth then up converting to 100 hertz you even add to make it more sharp. What is new in V5 is the way we can now handle halos and sharpness. We all know that when this lady walks in front of that detailed background something happens around her. You see halos. We were dealing with halos, and I think we're dealing as one of the best in the market with halos in perfect natural motion. So I call it no halo. But what you see is that we could do a lot on the background. Actually, the way to hide a bit the halos was by keeping the background not so sharp. 
now we can have combination. We have the same level of halo visibility, almost none, but a lot more sharp. This is the improvement step of P5 perfect resolution. So comparing P5 with, uh, with the, our previous uh, high-end engine, the perfect pixel authorized the engine, um, one of the examples here sets it all. The top one actually, the picture processing, was split over three chips inside that black hole. So you, what you see here as an example, already in the first chip, the first steps, some, some horizontal and vertical peaking were done. Uh, so sharp enhancement was done. While if you talk about, think about a very bad quality source, a lot of artifacts in there, it's not very smart to do that. Of course, it was not my choice to do that, uh, but there was nothing else. E5 now will do it better. So instead of doing first horizontal convert the peak, no, we're first cleaning up the picture, and then we're going to shop. We're doing picture processing because it's now all in one chip at the right moment and the right moment. Because it gives you a better picture. Basically, in the past, what we were doing for a very bad quality source. What we did was, as you saw, we were first sharpening up. Actually, we were making these artifacts more visible. Besides the other things we wanted to make the picture sharper, but we also made the artifacts more visible. Then we did artifact reduction in the second step, bringing down again the artifacts. First, we brought them up. So the end result was more or less a picture, which was not so much cleaner than the starting picture. And it also kept us from going for the maximum sharpness. With D5 now, doing first artifact reduction, make, getting a clean picture. Then we're doing sharpness increase, getting a sharper picture, so we get the best of both worlds. Basically, back to the, the very bad quality source picture I had in the beginning, it's the end unit, which went perfect pixel authorized the engine, you would have a result which is clearer than there, still artifacts are here and there visible. The B5 is what we Basically, B5 really comes at the right moment. Because, you know, these type of sources have been growing and growing. It all started in analog TV in the old days, but you know, Year by year, we got new sources, and we have been monitoring them. We've been thinking about them and making sure that when we make a new processor, it handles all of those sources. So you see a little bit in the white boxes what I think this kind of source is, more or less average. Um, and then you see the different steps with MP5, the, the role they play, the amount of size of processing and contribution they have to improving that source. The quality of Netflix and Amazon is not bad, is it? No. But it is sometimes also not good. So you see that it's less, I, I see YouTube as worse. That's why source can do more there. So you see I do it a lot. But there are other examples like this was always good in quality, was always good in quality. Gaming, Blu-ray is the same thing. That, that's why I put them a little bit lower. That makes a better spec. But you see the contribution. What I'm trying to say is P5 is getting the best out of every source. I'm trying to say here is P5 is working on previous sheet set on every source. It also works perfectly on every display in our range. Here, the first one is the one I talked about in Madrid, set by branch, ELED, HLIT, branch, normal stuff. This now at the uh, entire year, launching 8102, 8602, and 9603, 902 before just launched. All of them, you see the contribution again of P5, depending on the display capabilities, like for instance here, 8102 is in higher color gamma than standard, but not as high as 
the quantum dot one. So you see quantum dot is better in colors. Uh, and also the P5 processing will do a better job on that one. But A102 is then our 3D dimming product, which will do, together with the P5 processing, a better job on contrast, leveling each other out. But all that I see as now the combination, the ultimate combination of the best picture. So P5 plays a role in every display. <coughs> Depending on the display characteristics specification, you, some of the elements of P5 are, P5 is helping better depending on the display.